Whether you're already a Disney planning pro or you're about to go on your first ever Disney World vacation, stay tuned, because I'm about to make your trip a lot less stressful. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Disney World isn't what I'd call a last minute vacation destination. To do it right, you're gonna have a lot of pre-planning to make sure you don't miss out on your top priority experiences. And you're gonna run into some possibly intimidating situations while you're on your trip. So today we're gonna cover a lot of difficult situations that happen before you go to Disney World and while you're in Disney World to make sure you have an incredible trip no matter what. Believe me, we've been through all of this and we've got the answers. All right, let's start with one of the most intimidating planning points of them all, and that's reservations. So getting a table at the most popular restaurants. Advanced dining reservations are stressful. That is understandable. After all, when it comes to the more popular Disney World restaurants like Cinderella's Royal Table, Space 220, Be Our Guest Restaurant, even Ohana, sometimes you could miss out on your shining window of opportunity to grab a reservation if you forget to book them 60 days before your trip. Even if you do mark 60 days out on your calendar, and jump on the Disney World website first thing in the morning to make your ADRs, there's still the possibility you could be left empty handed even at 5.45 in the morning. But don't let that hypothetical scenario throw you for a loop because it's definitely something that's manageable and there's lots of solutions for. So if you don't get your much coveted reservation at 5.45 in the morning, 60 days out, we've got a few steps for you. Okay, step one, don't give up too soon. You know how I mentioned that Space 220 is one of the most popular dining reservations to get right now, don't let that deter you from even trying to get a reservation in the first place. Even if you log on to the Disney World website to grab a reservation and you find they're all taken already, it's still worth checking back periodically to see if a reservation does pop up out of the blue. This happens all the time. I actually will not find a reservation earlier in the day and then later in the day when I check, it's right there. Remember, cancellations happen. A lot of times guests have to cancel their dining reservations before for their visit, and sometimes they have to cancel them just a day before to not be charged that no-show fee. Some hotspot places also tend to be easier to grab reservations for at certain times of the day rather than others. For example, Oga's Cantina at Hollywood Studios can be a pretty hop in place. It's like way too crowded for its own good, but that's a different point. However, because people, I guess, don't wanna start drinking early in the morning, you might find Oga's Cantina reservations for the morning to be a lot easier to grab as opposed to the evening. Do I recommend you make morning bar reservations? reservations? Mm, it's up to you, but if Oga's Cantina is a bucket list destination, then hey, rise and shine and grab yourself a glass of Jedi mind trick. And also, I'll be completely honest with you, if I really want to eat at Ohana, I can keep refreshing and refreshing and refreshing and changing the time and poking at that My Disney Experience app and I'll usually find an Ohana reservation. It'll usually pop up. Will it be at exactly the time I want? Maybe not. It might be a couple hours earlier or a couple hours later, but I can at least snag a reservation most of the time and then I can continue checking before my trip to see if I can modify that reservation to a time I would prefer. That is how I handle those hard to get dining reservations. Now, step two, check for last minute wait lists. So advanced dining reservations may guarantee a table for you at one of those hot shot restaurants, but if you didn't snag one the first time around, you still may be able to grab a spot for you and your group on a walk up wait list. Just go to the check dining availability section on the My Disney Experience app the day that you're there. You can't do this beforehand, but you do this the day that you're there and search for restaurants with walk up wait lists still available on the day of your visit. The earlier on in the day you can do this, the more likely you'll be able to grab a spot on this list. Just keep in mind that your wait times to get in the restaurant once you're on the wait list will depend on the restaurant schedule and not yours. So when they're ready for you, you'd better be ready too. No time to be picky. On occasion, I've seen last minute walk up wait lists for restaurants as popular as Be Our Guest Restaurant at Magic Kingdom. So do not take this section of the My Disney Experience app for granted. Worst comes to worst, you might still be able to make last minute dining reservations for a different table service restaurant that you could wind up liking just as much, if not better. That walk up wait list, definitely a good plan. Now, step three, figuring out a plan B. So if you're still struggling to get a table at Cinderella's Royal Table, I know that can be a bummer, but there are so many great alternatives that you can turn to instead. If you don't mind swapping out princesses, you can book a reservation at Storybook Dining at Artist Point with Snow White and Company at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. Or if you're wanting more of that royal vibe alongside your meal, you may want to check out the Mary Poppins Returns themed Citricos at Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. 
or for either character dining for breakfast or signature dining for dinner, you can head over to Disney's Riviera Resort for a meal at Topolino's Terrace. There are lots of dining alternatives to choose from for all of these popular Disney World restaurants, but if you're interested in reading about them all to determine where you want to make plans, you can always check out our 2022 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining on the DFB Store website for a substantial list of all the options out there and our mini reviews of all of them. Don't forget to type in the code YouTube for some extra savings on your purchase. All right, next on our list is figuring out all the ins and outs of Disney Genie Plus. You know, I know, your neighbor knows, your great aunt twice removed knows, Disney Genie Plus is a constant stream of changes. So when I tell you that you can learn how to master Genie Plus and get the most bang for your buck when it comes to lightning lane selections that'll cost you 15 bucks per person per day in just three easy steps, well, that might be a harder sell. But what I will say is that the three steps I'm about to give you are the most important to keep in mind. And if you can get a hold of these tips, the rest of the details can start falling into place. So step one, get an early start. You won't be able to buy Genie Plus until the exact day of your park visit, right there at midnight on that day. But if you don't wanna worry about purchasing it after all the lightning lanes go live for the day, you can purchase Genie Plus in the middle of the night. So if you're willing to stay awake that long, go for it. Otherwise, you can always purchase them anytime before 7 a.m. if you're looking to get a head start. You may need coffee. You'll definitely need coffee. Now, once 7 a.m. rolls around, you can make your first Lightning Lane reservation of the day. Once the park's officially open for the day, make sure you stay on top of when you made your last Lightning Lane reservations. Because even if you haven't yet used the one you're currently holding on to, because its return time isn't until later in the evening, you can still make another Lightning Lane reservation every two hours. So if you play your cards right, you could very well hold on to multiple Lightning Lane reservations at once. Step two, know the effects of park hopping. So a brand new Genie Plus rule is now in effect. And this one pertains to how you use Genie Plus with your Park Hopper Pass. Let me give you a quick little refresher on Park Hopping rules. If you purchase a Park Hopper Pass, you won't be able to Park Hop to your second park until after 2 p.m. Got that? Fabulous. That's it. That's the rule. So here's the new Lightning Lane rule for Park Hoppers. Stick with me. Park Hoppers now have to wait to book a Lightning Lane at their second park of the day until the return times for the rides reach 2 p.m. or later for all guests. Park Hoppers and single day ticket holders alike. Did I lose you there? Here's an example. Let's say you purchased a Park Hopper ticket in Genie Plus. You decide to spend the first part of your day in Hollywood Studios, and then you're gonna hop over to Epcot. So you wanna grab a lightning lane for Soarin' Around the World. With this new rule, you'll have to wait until all Soarin' lightning lanes prior to 2 p.m. have been booked by the guests who are already inside Epcot. So while you're trying to enjoy your day over at Hollywood Studios, you'll have to check back time and again to see when those Soarin' lightning lanes are gonna go live for you after 2 p.m. because they could appear at any time. Don't stress too terribly about this though, just check back in when you're trying to kill time in other queue lines or you've got some downtime to check in on things. The important thing is to not let the stress of getting a lightning lane in your second park take away from your carefree Disney day as a whole. Step three, remember that some rides will cost extra. So Disney Genie Plus doesn't automatically mean you'll have access to the lightning lanes of all Disney World rides. The most popular rides in each of the parks will require an individual lightning lane entrance, which costs you around seven to $15 per person per ride. And that's in addition to the 15 bucks per day you may have already spent for Genie Plus. You can check our Disney Genie page on the DFB website to see the most recent list of a la carte rides, since these also tend to switch up depending on the season, ride demand, and if any brand new rides have entered the scene recently. I'll link the Genie Plus page info in the description below for you. It's very, very useful, so go take a look. Okay, the next thing where we're not sure why it has to be that hard in Disney World is finding your car in the parking lot. It starts off innocently enough. You drive to one of the theme parks, excited to get your day started, park in the massive lot, head on through the main gates, have a marvelous day, and as you're making your way back to your car at the end of the night, you totally forgot where you parked in the first place. Was it Heroes or Villains, Road 23, Butterfly? What's going on? Okay, easy as one, two, three. Step one, use Disney's new car locator on its app. If it's any comfort to you, you're definitely not the first person who's ever lost their car in a Disney parking lot, which is why Disney recently launched the car locator tool on their My Disney Experience app. It is super simple and free. 
First, tap on the three horizontal lines on the bottom right side of the app's screen, that little hamburger menu, then scroll down past those main selections until you get to the little tab that says Car Locator toward the bottom of the list. Now, here's something super important to remember. In order for this to work, you've got to do this step directly after you park your car. It won't work if you're already in the park. Once you park your car, you can tap that Save Vehicle Location button, and the app will do that. Then, when you need to find your car at the end of the night, you'll just tap back over to the Car Locator section of the app and voila, Disney Tech will guide you on home. Step two on this one, plan ahead. So this goes hand in hand with step one. If you want to keep track of your parking spot the old fashioned way, then take that picture of which lot you parked in and what number you're parked at. That way you can refer back to your photos to help track down your vehicle when you're ready to head back to the hotel. And step three, you can ask a cast member. This is a special hidden tip that a lot of people don't know about. Let's say you totally didn't remember to do either steps one or two. Let's say you and the group were just too excited, hopped out of the car without a second thought and practically sprinted toward the front gates of the park. If you absolutely have no idea where your car is because of that reckless abandon, don't worry, it happens to the best of us, then track down a parking cast member. Cast members out in the lots keep track of what time each of the parking lot rows were filled, so if you can give the cast member a rough estimate of when you arrived at the park, they can point you in the direction of where cars were being parked around that time. Tracking down your car is one thing, but tracking down Disney World food can be another type of beast entirely. Sure, Disney World's got a plethora of options, 200 plus 20 something restaurants, but if you're needing to track down a certain type of meal, the search can be overwhelming. So let's avoid that. The next thing we're gonna talk about is dealing with food fears. Now got someone in your group whose main source of fuel is chicken tenders and French fries, super picky eaters. Maybe you've got someone in your group that has a specific type of diet they need to accommodate. The nice thing about Disney World restaurants is how incredibly diverse they are. Not all of them are going to be your all-time favorite with the best food ever, but there should be something out there for every type of eater at each restaurant. So step one, hit up places with a la carte menus. With quick service meals, this a la carte strategy is super easy because quick services are all about the individual menu prices. But table and signature service meals can be a little more hit and miss. Though prefix meals will still give you the options of what appetizers, entrees, and desserts you're wanting to order, they're not really going to give you the option of just ordering a basket of fries and calling it good meaning you might end up paying lots more for a whole lot of food you're not planning on eating. Table service restaurants with individual priced items like Chef Art Smith's Homecoming in Disney Springs, Steakhouse 71, at Contemporary Resort, 50's Primetime Cafe at Hollywood Studios, plus lots and lots others, give you more freedom to order whatever you want off the menu, no questions asked. Step two, don't be afraid to ask. So Disney cast members can't read your mind. So if you've got a question about possible meal substitutions or concerns about certain ingredients, let them know. They're trained to walk you through the menus and make you feel confident about your order when it's all said and done. Not to mention at the beginning of your table service meal, the first question servers will usually ask is, are there any allergies or accommodations before we get started? And that's your cue to spill all. But if your server accidentally skips over this question and gets right to the drink orders, don't be nervous to backtrack and fill them in on any special diets you want to plan your meal around. Now next, you can definitely learn about special diets before you go. You can totally navigate Disney World and eat there too, no matter what kind of dietary restrictions you need to accommodate. But it may take some studying up ahead of time so you don't have to stress over it all when you arrive at the parks. Look over Disney World's menus on their website for each restaurant you're considering. Whether that's fast food, table service, fancy restaurants, all of it. Because those online menus should have a featured section of plant-based and allergy-friendly options for you to check out. And we can help you out too. Our 2022 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining featured on the DFB Store has a section spotlighting dining around Disney with special diets. And if you drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash Disney Special Diets, we'll give you a hefty list of special diets information that you can refer back to as your trusty guide while planning out your Disney dining itinerary just to make your life 10 times easier. And speaking of making your life 10 times easier, let's continue with that trend and keep moving forward. Name that Disney movie and you'll earn mad respect points from yours truly. Next, we're going to talk about avoiding crowds. It is very people-y out there, and it's especially people-y in Disney World. So as much as you may want to pretend that the crowd levels aren't going to bother you, they could definitely bother you. They could bother you a lot. Even extroverts can find themselves burnt out after bumping into shoulder-to-shoulder crowds all day long. 
So how are we gonna make this easy? Step one, take advantage of the morning and night. If you're staying at a Disney World owned hotel or at the Disney Good Neighbor Hotels, you'll have access to the early theme park entry benefit, which will allow you to enter the parks 30 minutes before they're open to everyone else. And if you're staying at a deluxe Disney World hotel, you'll have the extra advantage of those extended evening hours, which are available on some nights for select locations, allowing you to stay in the parks up to two hours after they close to the public. Now, notice I said the words select and some a lot there. That means that it's only only certain nights that those are available. So definitely check out that list before you make your hotel reservations so that you know you're spending that extra money for a reason. Now these perks are great ways to not only have more time in the parks, but also have more time in the parks before the regular crowd shuffles in, a little Billy Joel for you there. But let's break away from those benefits for a second because what if you don't have them? What if you decide to stay at an Airbnb instead or one of the Universal Studios hotels? Well, morning and night hours are still prime times to hit up the Disney World parks. Disney's peak hours really start to happen around mid to late afternoon because not everyone's gonna wanna wake up for the first hour of the park day since rope drop usually is at around 8 a.m. And even though those nighttime crowds can still see pretty big numbers thanks to the nighttime fireworks shows, if you'd rather not wait alongside the masses, you can always take this opportunity to hit up areas of the park that have calmed down a bit thanks to those shows. Now, next up, familiarize yourself with the quieter places. It might be hard to believe, but Disney World does have quieter sections in their parks that are just super chill. Disney's Animal Kingdom has a lot of them. I'm always a big advocate for those animal paths like Maharaja Jungle Trek and the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. Not only are these fairly quiet and not too crowded, but you can also see a ton of animals at once. Fun fact, if you go on the Maharaja Jungle Trek to see the Rodriguez flying foxes, or giant bats as I like to call them, 30 minutes before the trail closes, you'll be able to watch them trail into their caves for the evening, which is really fun to watch. Disney's Hollywood Studios can be a major cluster, especially in Toy Story Land and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, but the areas around Echo Lake stay pretty spread out and are lots less crowded. You'll also find places of solitude around Animation Courtyard, especially since the Voyage of the Little Mermaid show still isn't happening right now. At Epcot, I could always recommend those little exhibits inside each pavilion that stay pretty serene, but if you're looking for a place that's outside, try ducking into the back left area of the Japan Pavilion where you'll find a little koi pond, or you can head to the second story of the Canada Pavilion and watch the waterfall for a while. That's easily in my top five happy places. As far as the wild antics going on at Magic Kingdom, you may want to try the little alleyways between the shops on Main Street USA. Although there's quite the hustle and bustle going on in the main walkway itself, these little areas between the shops don't see a lot of action. Also, until Tron and the Walt Disney World Railroad reopen, way back there in New Fantasyland and Storybook Circus could be a little bit quieter. Also, if you have a child in your party that is overstimulated and needs some quiet time, you can, of course, go to the baby care centers. Those are relatively quiet, air conditioned, and you can just sit and rock in the rocking chairs for a little while. All right, step three, don't be afraid to leave the parks. No, seriously, just scoot on out of there if you need to. Your Disney park day does not need to be a prison sentence. You shouldn't feel trapped there. And if you're getting to that point, then it's time to leave. Take a nap back at your hotel, maybe sit on the beach side of one of the nearby hotels, whatever it is that you may need to do to get back in your happy place mindset. After all, just because you leave a Disney park doesn't mean you can't get back in. Your ticket will be good for entry and re-entry all day long. Next on our list of why Disney World has gotten difficult, and to be fair, this has been the case for a long time, is handling sometimes when the family tensions get to be too much. Sometimes your greatest Disney World challenges have nothing to do with the parks. Sometimes it has to do with the people you're with. Tensions can run super high during a Disney World vacation because you're spending a lot of money. And usually you're someplace where there's a lot of new stuff. There's a lot of overstimulation. You're maybe eating things you're not used to, not getting enough sleep. Lots of things can contribute to you feeling exhausted both physically and emotionally. So how do we fix this? Step one, keep yourself as comfortable as possible. What does that mean? Make sure you stay hydrated. Make sure you build downtime into your trip and into your days. Go find some AC if things start to feel too hectic internally. Like we said about leaving the park, sometimes leaving the park is the very best thing you can possibly do for you and your family and your mental health. So make sure to keep yourself at a stable point 
mentally and emotionally, and that will help a lot with the whole family tensions thing. Step two, you gotta listen to your body. How long has it been since you've eaten something? When was the last time you got off your feet? So if you don't feel like you're starving or dehydrated or exhausted, then your body has ways of telling you otherwise. So keep up with that consistent sleep schedule. Make sure your group is well fed. They're drinking plenty of water, taking plenty of sit down breaks. Because if you guys just keep going, 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 like the Energizer Bunny, you're gonna find your batteries drain real quick. And step three, listen to each other. If there's someone in your group who's having a tough time, get to the root of the problem. Like I mentioned before, the root of the problem could be as simple as getting some food in your system or finding some AC. But sometimes the problem pulls from something else. Maybe there's a meet and greet that the group skipped over and someone in your party was really looking forward to. Or maybe there's a ride you're about to go on that's making someone in your family really nervous. Remember, this isn't just your vacation, it's everyone's, so everyone needs an equal say in how you're navigating the parks. Make sure everybody takes turns deciding what to do next. And if someone doesn't want to do a particular activity, it's okay to sit it out and split up from the group for a bit if need be. Don't forget, you can always do rider swap if the person who's choosing not to do the thing is a little kid. You don't have to force everyone to be together at all times, especially if you have multiple adults in the party and the ability to take different groups to different experiences. Just come up with a time to reconvene later on. Now, another way that Disney can be really hard right now is technology glitches. Things maybe haven't been translated to the Disney computer system or something's not showing up in your My Disney experience that you know you bought or stuff like that. And that can be a real hassle and exhausting to get to the bottom of. So let's talk about that for a second. Disney might lose your hotel reservation. You might get stuck on transportation services and miss your dining reservation. Your really expensive Disney food might not be up to par. Lots of things can go wrong. So step one, if there's an issue with your hotel reservation, you booked your hotel, maybe Disney doesn't think you booked a hotel. The key here is to make sure that that thing is in place early rather than later. So Disney's got a number you can call that should be able to help track down your rogue hotel reservation, 407-939-4357. You may be on a hold for a bit, but being able to talk to someone that can help things get straightened out for you should help ease with the stress. And in case this is your first rodeo with Disney World Transportation, then let me be the first to tell you that Disney buses aren't exactly known for their speed. You'll need to fact during at least an hour of travel time before your reservation. Even if you wind up getting to the place you've made reservations for super early, that's still way better than missing out on it entirely. Also, keep in mind that Disney does understand that things happen. So if you have a reservation at 2 p.m., they're not automatically gonna cancel everything as soon as the clock strikes 2.01. You'll have about 15 minutes of grace time after your reservations before Disney puts your table on their walk-up wait list for someone else to snag. Now, if that stuff doesn't work, you're gonna go to guest services. Disney will always try to make things right, so if you're not 100% or even 80% satisfied with a meal or service or some other situation, you have the right to request having a chat with guest services about your concerns. Guest services are located at the front of each of the parks. There's guest services at all the hotels and near Deluxe Burger in Disney Springs. The front desk cast members of your resort lobby can help point you in the direction of how to alleviate lots of tense situations. Just don't take advantage of this. Cast members are always happy to help and even happier to help someone who's got a nice chill attitude who understands that mistakes happen and it's okay. But if you find yourself wanting to reach out to guest services about everything, you may end up looking like the guest who cried emergency. Step three, take pictures. Okay, this one's really important. This specifically goes back to the case of the missing Disney reservations, but it also works for virtual queues. It works for mobile orders, lots of stuff. So if somehow one of your reservations, one of your park tickets, something that was on your My Disney Experience app disappears, it's important to have receipts and proof of purchase. So email confirmations are a great way to backtrack and show Disney, hey, look, I did really follow instructions. Please help me. But it's also a good idea to take screenshots of the reservations that you've got listed on your My Disney Experience account too. Because here's the thing. Technology does fail all the time. It's our best and worst enemy. So if there's some sort of glitch in the system, you shouldn't have to pay the price and lose something you already secured weeks or months ago. This also goes for those virtual queues when new rides open. If you get a spot in a virtual queue, take a screenshot of it immediately because if for some reason it glitches out and disappears, you have something to show guest services to say, look, I had it, I bought it, it's here. And another way that Disney World is super hard right now, fitting it all in. Disney World has four theme parks, two water parks, giant shopping districts, and dozens of resorts. The entirety of the Disney World property is nearly the size of San Francisco, meaning you got a lot of ground to cover and only so much time to do it all. So how are we gonna make this easy? 
prioritize. The first time you look at everything Disney World has to offer, it's a lot like looking at a school syllabus for the entire semester. There's a lot to do and it can seem really overwhelming at first. But it's best to break things up and look at it in chunks. Probably could have worded that less gross, but whatever. Take your Disney World itinerary a day at a time and figure out what's going to be your must-dos for each day. Or pick and choose some priorities you want to make sure you do during your time there and then work your schedule around those. And everybody's wants and needs are going to look different, so meet up with your group and your family to figure out what rides and shows and restaurants other people are prioritizing. Next, you can study the layout of Disney World. Like I said, Disney World is one spread out place, so don't create an itinerary that's going to set you up for failure immediately. If you've got a park hopper and you plan on hopping from Animal Kingdom to Magic Kingdom and maybe even over to Fort Wilderness Resort later for a meal and a show at Hoop Dee Doo Musical Review, you're gonna have to factor in a whole lot of travel time because a good portion of your day is gonna wind up being you on a bus. So don't set yourself up for failure. Instead, have an itinerary day that makes sense. Look at the Disney World map on your My Disney Experience app and find out what things are close together that'll make your vacation 10 times easier to navigate. Check out our videos where we actually do it all. This topic is so big, we've got two whole videos dedicated to helping you accomplish everything you wanna do at Disney in a specific period of time, whether that's a weekend getaway or a full week vacation. So if you wanna really get into the nitty gritty and learn some of our best planning techniques to help you get as much done at Disney World in limited time, you can check those videos out on our DFB YouTube channel. Another way that Disney World is just really hard right now, literally paying for it. Hello, yes, hi, just your friendly reminder that Disney World is incredibly expensive and can take a whole lot of budgeting to actually pull the whole thing off. So how do you budget for a potentially multi-thousand dollar trip? Well, here are three of our favorite methods right now. Step one, consider staying off property. Depending on the season, even Disney's value resorts can be 200 bucks, so you may wanna look into finding a cheaper stay at one of Disney's Good Neighbor hotels. I mentioned those earlier, but in case you're not familiar with what they are, Good Neighbor hotels are not owned by Disney, but partner with them to help guests still receive lots of the same perks and benefits, while also saving you money in the meantime. There are over 40 of these Good Neighbor hotels around Disney World, and you can learn more about them on the Good Neighbor hotels website. My favorites are always going to be Swan and Dolphin because they're right on property, they're excellent hotels, they're less expensive, and they're basically deluxe resorts. You can walk to Hollywood Studios, you can walk to Epcot. They're amazing. All right, step two, skip the extras. Genie Plus, Magic Bands, After Hours Parties, those add-ons can be nice enhancements, but you don't have to have them. And the main expenses you need to worry about are the travel accommodations, hotel stays, park tickets, and dining. Everything else is just gravy. Step three, use our food budgeting guide. Sometimes it just helps to see what your dining budget's gonna look like instead of keeping all those numbers in your noggin. That's why we've got a Disney food budgeting worksheet in our DFB guidebook. Whether you use our nifty little worksheet or not, it's still important to research the restaurants you're interested in hitting up before your trip. That way, you don't get slapped with sticker shock after peeping those prices while you're at the restaurant. Whew, one more quick note that may be the most important of them all. Don't feel like you have to know everything, especially if this is your first Disney World rodeo. Disney World can feel overwhelming to navigate. There's Genie Plus updates, advanced dining reservations, external travel mumbo jumbo that Disney doesn't even have a hand in. But let me just boil down your absolute essentials that you need to have figured out before your trip so it's nice and clean and easy to digest. One, reservations. Hotel, theme park tickets, park pass reservations, dining. Two, enhancements and extras. These would be Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, Savi's Workshop. You'll probably need to make reservations for those next. Three, pack the essentials, but don't overthink it. What would you think would be important to bring on summer vacation or a theme park destination anywhere else? Those are still gonna be the most important things to bring to Disney World. Four, make a list of restaurants you wanna try in each park. Even if it's a quick service location that you don't need to make advanced dining reservations for, it's still good to know where you wanna eat on the fly ahead of time. And five, everything else is all icing on the cake, so don't worry about it. All right, the planning doesn't stop here, folks. Make sure to check out our DFB website for even more step-by-step -step tips and tricks. We eat everything that's new in the parks. We do everything that's new in the park. So that's always gonna be over on our website, fully reviewed, fully laid out for you with tons of huge, beautiful pictures. So you can see exactly what the experiences look like, how much they cost, and which ones you might wanna do the most. 
Also, feel free to sign up for my Weird and Wacky DFB newsletter for the latest Disney news and probably a reference to my mom from time to time. Thanks for listening, everybody, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon. By the way, don't worry about it. It's going to be fine.